Here's a segment from a recent Gun Talk radio episode. You can listen to all the Gun Talk radio podcasts however you tune in, or check out guntalk.com for more. You may have noticed, I hope, I hope you're aware, that there's a presidential election headed our way very soon, November, coming right up here. And while America has been described as a two-party system, it's actually not. There are more parties out there. Probably the, uh, the one that a lot of you know about is the Libertarian Party. We are really pleased right now to be joined by the presidential candidate for the Libertarian Party, Dr. Joe Jorgensen, joins us. Uh, Dr. Jorgensen, welcome to Gun Talk. Oh, so glad to be here. Thanks so much. Absolutely. I know that. Did we, did we catch you? Did you get out of the elevator? Because I was afraid we were going to lose you as you were yes. traveling there. <laughs> yes. I'm back in the room. It's a hectic day. I had to go, uh, as they say, uh, kiss hands and shake babies. There was literally a five-month-old baby I had to go meet who was just the cutest thing. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Okay. Well, obviously, uh, I had a show called Gun Talk, and with my background, our interest is primarily in gun rights, the Second Amendment. So uh, as the candidate for president for the Libertarian Party, what would gun rights look like under your administration? Well, I'd first like to mention that I am a gun owner, and I am for the Second Amendment. And if it were up to me, I would get rid of every gun law passed in the last 100 years, that the Second Amendment is clear that we are allowed to bear, you know, keep and bear arms. So uh, it would look quite a bit different than it does now. And I wouldn't even entertain red flag laws, which are ridiculous, because basically they're taking away your rights without even a fair trial. Well, uh, that all sounds great. I, I see that, at least if I read this correctly, it looks like you have uh, advocated abolishing the ATF. Is that correct? Yes. I, Who... I hope you agree with me that they get in the way of simple gun ownership, that they go around trying to uh, pass onerous laws that keep us from our guns. Do you see it well, that way? I'm not sure the ATF actually tries to pass laws. That's not what they do. They enforce oh, laws. Well, My question right, to you is, right. who, who would enforce federal gun laws if you got rid of the ATF? The Second Amendment. I, I'm a big proponent of the Second Amendment, but the Second Amendment does not enforce gun law. So who would enforce, who is going to enforce the law? Well, what, okay, well, let me ask you, what kind of law are you talking about? Well, the existing laws, until you can get rid of them, you know, we have federal laws, we have uh, the National Firearms Act, we have restrictions and regulations right. about owning uh, full automatic and suppressors. So we have the, the, all of this bureaucracy that you have to go through to get right. to those. Would you be getting rid of all of that as well? Oh, yes. Again, there's, you know, we were fine with machine guns being uh, perfectly legal. And I'd like to point out that part of the reason that machine guns were illegal was thanks to the alcohol prohibition. And that we'd like to stop such prohibi uh, prohibition laws. But, you know, of course, we would do it orderly, not just the first day. And there's only so much the president can do. I can mm -hmm. get rid of executive orders. However, I can't simply strike down laws without the help of Congress. However, what I can do is I can try to take as much to the Supreme Court as possible and point out that we do have a Second Amendment and we should all be able to own guns for whatever reason, whether it's hunting, whether it's self-protection, whether it's collecting. Speaking of the Supreme Court, I mean, I, in, my, in my view, I got to tell you, I think that's one of the most important parts of selecting a president is either the continuation or a change in what we're seeing from the Supreme Court. What's your take? Oh, I would not have, I would not appoint a Supreme Court justice who is not for the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment is very important to our country. I'm going to just uh, throw this out. You probably are aware of this, but having been an observer of this for 50 years now, I've seen a lot of folks come along who say, I fully support the Second Amendment. And that's a lovely phrase. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had, uh, well, Sonia Sotomayor and Elena Kagan mm -hmm. both said fully support the Second Amendment. But to them, what that means is the Second Amendment says that the United States government can own guns, but you have no right to them. So when somebody says, I support the Second Amendment, I always have to dig deeper. And I would encourage yep. you when people are telling you, oh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm 
first of all, people say, I'm a gun owner. I go, I don't care, frankly, because there are, an <laughs> awful lot of, there are a lot of people who own guns who want to destroy our gun rights. And number two, huh. when people say I'm in favor of the, oh yeah, a lot of people, well, Joe Biden owns guns and he wants to do away with all of our <laughs> gun true. rights. So, I mean, there you are yes. right there, right? <laughs> yes. And my apologies. I forgot that I was on a gun show because if you say Second Amendment to any non-gun owner or just in the general media, they pretty much take that to mean that you can own guns. But as I mentioned, I would get rid of every gun law in the last 100 years, and that I would just have no restrictions over who can own guns. Because really, if you look at it, the criminals, they don't go through the background check. They don't go through the waiting period. And there have been documented cases of women who, for instance, have been killed because they were on a waiting list or you know whatever the, the state right. waiting was in order to get a gun. And meanwhile, they get killed while they're waiting for their self-defense. So again, the criminals and the people who are out to harm others, they don't follow the laws. So why do we have laws that just law-abiding citizens follow? It's ridiculous. Uh, I am not in disagreement with you on anything so far. There's one other thing you may be may not be aware of, but you could actually use sometime, and that is by Supreme Court decision, oh, p- people who are prohibited from owning guns cannot be required to register their guns because that constitutes self-incrimination. So the laws only apply to the law body. Right. Well, again, I would get rid of all registration laws because, again, the criminals aren't registering their guns. What good does it do to have a law in which only law-abiding citizens are going to follow because the law-abiding citizens are not going to be using their guns to go out there and, um, you know, have drive-by shootings in mm-hmm. for a particular drug trade or whatever. So we don't need those laws. And, again, it infringes upon our rights to own a gun and to protect ourselves. And I'd like to point out, as a woman, you mentioned Joe Biden. And yes, I I do remember the comment when he said uh, he was giving advice to his wife to go outside and just shoot the (laughs) gun in the air. Right, (laughs) right. It didn't go over very well. (laughs) Um, But I am a woman, and they call a gun the great equalizer. And if I'm home alone, uh, you know, if my husband's out of town, whatever, uh, I pretty much couldn't defend myself against a 200-pound guy coming into my house. So mm-hmm. we have the right to defend ourselves. The police cannot be with us around the clock. And there have been so many documented cases in which people have called 911, and by the time the police showed up, it was too late. So, again, we have the right to defend ourselves. And, you know, collect guns if that's our choice or go hunting if that's what we want to do. There you go. Last question for you, obviously. I mean, and I'm agreeing with you on all the, the Second Amendment, the gun gun things here. The question then becomes, and it's the one that you get all the time, and and you are a lifelong libertarian, mm-hmm. what's your chances of being elected? And if you don't really have a chance, should people vote for you when they can vote for what might be a more likely, even if you said that's a less favorable outcome, but it's better than the other way? You know what I'm talking about. Exactly. That's an excellent question. Well, first of all, I'd like to point out, when I ask people, do you think government is too big or too small? They usually laugh when they when I ask them, is government too small? And my mm-hmm. follow-up question is, why would you vote for something that you don't want? Furthermore, I'd like to point out that there are something like 40 million libertarian-leaning American voters who, if we just voted the way we wanted, We would get somewhere. And last, I would say, if you are in a predominantly red state or predominantly blue state, you know who's going to win ahead of time. So why not vote for the person who you really want? Because it's not going to have an effect. For instance, I'm out of South Carolina. Mm -hmm. We were one of six states, only six states to carry Bob Dole. Uh, There's no way Biden's winning South Carolina. So if you live in South Carolina, that is definitely not a wasted vote. You're showing that you're showing that you are sick and tired of what's going on. And so I can tell you that voting for either Donald Trump or Joe Biden will bring you higher taxes. It will bring you more spending. And I don't know anybody who wants that. Dr. Joe Jorgensen, thank you so much for your time. I know that you are in great demand and you're very busy. We appreciate you joining us for a few minutes today. Well, can I just mention, if your listeners are interested, they can go to joe20.com. 
That's JO20.com. I'd love to have them check us out. And I'd also like to point out, and to answer your question, well over half of our volunteers are non-libertarians, so we are reaching out there. Ah, okay. Yeah, let me get that out again. It's Joe 20 That's JO20.com. You can find out more about uh, the campaign of Dr. Joe Jorgensen. Again, thank you so much. Great to be here. Thanks so much. Have a good right. day.